Okay, so this is take two. Uh, we had some technical difficulties there. Sorry about that. Mark was just explaining uh, what the value, uh, how valuable this information we have. Also behind us is another pretty fancy machine. It's a lidar. Yes. And it's a, and it's tell a little, a little bit about lidar. Uh, well, it's a it's, it's a machine that can actually send out lasers to um, tell the distance between where the camera is because it, it works like a camera, but it's taking light in from a. Uh, so basically it fires the lasers rapidly and it can actually um, give us distances and it can make a picture, like a 3D picture. Yeah, so, so this flume will be uh, recorded in three-dimensional and we'll be able to rotate yep. it around, take a look at it. And so uh, we're really bringing lots of different sciences, a lot of different partners to the archaeological investigation. Uh, a shout out to the USGS for their help and uh, of course quality services and I, I can't go without mentioning Mike Rungi. Mike was the one who made the contact with USGS and they brought their technical services out here and it's uh, very valuable in this archaeological investigation. And that's a wrap. Hi, I'm Kevin Kuchenbecker, Historic Preservation Officer for the City of Deadwood, and this is another moment in Deadwood's history. Uh, we're about six feet underground here in the parking lot at Ten Lizzie's. Uh, hopefully the last videos you've watched, uh, we've been talking about the archaeological investigation. And uh, a shout out to Mike Rungi, our city archivist, and uh, uh, has background in archaeology, reached out to uh, USGS. And we have Josh Velder here, who's a hydrologist with UGS, USGS excuse me, out of Rapid City. Josh, thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Um, we, we brought them in. They brought some high-tech equipment in. That uh, It's RTK, yep. RTK, which is a hypersensitive GPS system. Yep. And what are you guys doing for us with that? So um, with a partnership with, with these guys, the U.S. Geological Survey, we're able to come in and we're able to now characterize subsurface changes. So we're getting real-time kinematic uh, RTK um, GPS locations depths of real high accurate elevations of when these elevations are changing. We also uh, have the opportunity here to, to look at history and get the, the elevations of where these uh, the historic uh, features are, baskets and, and different, different food vessels. Food we vessels, found some yeah. chopsticks uh, today and yesterday. Um, and so uh, beside uh, Josh is, is the flume we've talked about. Yep. And uh, with this uh, RTK, we're actually going to be able to get the slope Yep. 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 And, and uh, fully map it in and geo-reference it into maps. Yep. Um, we also did the walls and, and profiling the walls. Yep. The and ultimate goal of this is we're trying to get a, a three-dimensional map of the, all these features. Where are these features located within the, within space, and and also um, where and how deep and how which layers are they are they found in? So that's really what we're trying to look for. And, and so that's going to be very valuable information as we document this part of history we don't know that much about in Lower Main Street. Uh, we're in the Chinatown District, of course, in 2001-2004 we did an archaeological investigation. But I don't think we were as deep as we are here. Um, and that's because uh, the creek isn't far from us. That's right. Um, from uh, being a hydrologist, can you see evidences of floods and stuff in the profiles? Yeah, it, the, the layering in some of these areas is absolutely amazing. You see, we see uh, a major flood events that have occurred in this area. We see, actually we saw remnants of the fires that yep. occurred back in the 1800s. Um, so the, the preservation and the layering of this of this area is absolutely pristine. It's, it's amazing. And, and not only is it going to tell Deadwood's history, but from, from USGS, it also gives you a snapshot in what's happening in the Black Hills, correct? That's right. We, we do a lot of studies in the Black Hills of South Dakota um, looking at paleo floods, that's what it's called, paleo flood studies. And uh, this is just another piece of the puzzle and this is going to give us a, a ton of information for us to, to further provide that story of, of the how South Dakota became the way it is today. And, and, and obviously Deadwood as well, and that's what we care about, right. um, National Historic Landmark that it is. Uh, behind us we have a piece of equipment as well, and it's uh, LIDAR, uh, Quality Services, uh, which is the principal investigators, the archaeological firm, is actually doing a 3D model of, of this uh, flume. Uh, we're flying in uh, uh, archaeologists this evening from Maryland, and they uh, uh, specialize in the preservation of archaeological features. And so this flume will actually be removed and hopefully someday in one of our great museums here in Deadwood. 
And then with the, the basket, uh, they're going to bring in um, the, the methods to remove that basket. We haven't taken any of the contents out of that. And so we may have organic materials, seeds, food, we don't know. Um, yesterday they found an opium tin, uh, another Chinese coin, like I said, some chopsticks and uh, a single uh, dose vial of uh, opium. So lots and lots of artifacts coming out of here. It's, it's super exciting to, to document, record, and stand, what, 140 years uh, uh, this wood is put into place, probably uh, prior to the 1883 flood, probably after the 1879 flood. Yep. And, and uh, from your vantage point, it's not something you normally get to do with USGS. No, I, you know, this partnership, this, this, this relationship that we're building with these guys, uh, Kevin and, and Mike, as you mentioned, um, it's, it's been a real opportunity for us hydrologists to come out and, and you know, put into practice our, our geologic expertise, you know, to, helping with telling that story and stuff. But looking at some of these artifacts, it, it really is an amazing experience. So we, uh, we, I know, USGS, I know we're super fortunate to be, to, to be called in to, to have this opportunity. And Deadwood's fortunate to have USGS uh, and, and to have Rose Beers in the Deadwood hi history. So um, <laughs> she's the one behind the camera giving yep. a shout out to, to <laughs> Chelsea and Rose as well. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and that's a wrap. Hi, I'm Kevin Kuchenbecker, Historic Preservation Officer for the City of Deadwood, and this is another moment in Deadwood history. We're here with Josh Velder with USGS out of Rapid City, who's partnered with us. Thanks to Mike Runge of our office for reaching out, and I think it's been a great partnership, Josh. Um, uh, very exciting. Um, you've probably seen the video earlier that we just did, but we felt that it was good to come out and talk a little more about the scientific um, things that we're learning about Deadwood. We're standing, we got something that appears to be a, a wooden, a small wooden flume. We don't know yet. It does have a vertical element. It's about, oh, 10 inches wide. But what's interesting, uh, Josh, is that we can see what's happening in the wall mm -hmm. by the profile. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So this, the, the flume feature that we're looking at is, is possibly dug into the ground. And the way we know that is because we're, what we're looking at is these layering, the different layering. It changes different colors, different texture types. And as we can see, there's layering that occurs on one side of the flume and then it continues on through the other. So we believe it's actually dug into into the subsurface here. So, yep. Yeah, that's really cool. And so so that dark layer is probably a, a burn or ashes or a fire, or remnants of a fire? Yep, um, that's something that, that we're looking into as far as, you know it's black, so we know it's organic, it's organic rich, right? And so as it's decaying, it's, it's creating that black material, that black feature. And so we've actually marked out where all the different changes in the layering is occurring. And what we do is we take this and we, we survey this in and get a real accurate elevation. And then we can take this 40 meter long trench, do the exact same thing and start relation, uh, creating a relationship spatially of where these different layer changes occur. Right? And, and then if, correct me if I'm wrong, you actually are taking photographs as well and you're describing the soils, you're taking photographs and with those photographs and with the RTK, that, that super uh, sensitive GPS unit, we'll actually be able to rubber sheet some of the photographs on there? Yep, that's the ultimate goal, is we're going to create a 3D model of, of this whole area and have these photographs right behind it. So we have not only a, a, a photograph of, the, of what we're looking at here in time right now, our snapshot in time, yep. so we can look at the historic snapshot in time. And so that's what we're trying to ultimately do. And this has been amazing. I mean, even right here, you can see there's just artifacts that are sticking out of the ground. It's oh. just unbelievable what kind of uh, opportunity there is here. And, and so uh, below that fire level is kind of what is a, a silty, sandy material? Yep, yep. If you look down and you kind of dig down deeper in here, it turns into a, a sandy, sandy soil kind of material. It's a and it's probably a deposited from a flood? Yep, and as we get down lower, we're seeing these bigger, rounder rocks. What that's indicative for us is is possibly a big, large flood. Carry these big, round, um, uh, kind of like a river rock. Yep. It's around and they're not quarried and square, so that's yep. what we're looking at. Yep. But then underneath that, there's another organic level. Yes, and that's where uh, possibly another fire could have occurred. You know, a forest fire happens around the Black Hills here. Um, it could have happened from from uh, many different things, but yeah, that's, that's a real possibility. And then another flood level. 
And then another flood, yep. And all that is about 16, 18 inches below this wood feature that we're looking at here. Yep, this plume, yep. And, and what's sticking me in the butt back here <laughs> is actually a tree stump um, that's underground here. You can see the roots. Um, and uh, it's pretty cool that uh, we're even finding early tree stumps uh, in the vicinity of this feature too. Um, Josh, thank you.